Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to The Frying Pan, your favorite pop culture podcast. Uh, I am your host, Daniel, and I'm here with my co-host. It's me, it's Robert. How's it going, everybody? Lovely day. Lovely weather. Um, Not lovely weather, actually. It's going to rain the whole week, but it's okay. Yeah, I was going to say, hasn't it just been slowly drizzling on us the whole day? Yeah, it's been fucking wet, if you know what I mean. (laughs) Fuck, you know? (laughs) All right. Um, you may have noticed that we have a new intro, and there is because somebody made us a new intro. Shout outs. Shout out Noah. Um, he has a website, I'll put that in the description if you are interested in beats he makes. Because why not? Liddy. Friends helping friends. But anywho, how are you doing, Bobby? How was your day? Um, I'm doing alright, can't really complain. Um... I have had The Witcher 3 for a very long time, and I am almost convinced myself that I should go and play it today, so that's something. Well, seeing as how you're miraculously up till 5 in the morning every uh, every night, I'd imagine you have a little bit of free time. <laughs> of course, but that's when I do my research, Dan. Oh, is it? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Nothing. Nothing says productivity like 5 a.m., Hey, it's actually quite peaceful. Yeah, I guess. You got the birds coming out, chirping a little bit. The sun's peeking out. It could be nice. Yeah. Granted, mm, sleeping till noon every day is kind of unfun, but... Yeah, see, that's why like, I could never do that. If I lose my morning, I feel like I lose everything, and it just puts me in a sour mood throughout the day. Mm. I, I'm not really a morning person in general, though, so like, I'm just unhappy no matter when I wake up. That's fair. And that's the thing is, I'm not even a morning person either, but if I wake up at, like, 11, I'm just like, oh, threw my whole day away, nothing matters, fuck this, and all that jazz. that definitely makes sense, like, if you had a normal sleep schedule and you just slept an obscene amount of time, but, like, I don't really feel like that just because I'm, you know, only sleeping, like, seven or so hours anyways. True. And you're one hour shy of the recommended. Um, you know, that number actually fluctuates depending on what study you look at a decent bit. Yeah, like it, I've just always heard eight as a as a wee lad. That's all I've been told. I mean, I know in terms of like uh, middle school to high school age, they say like nine hours is like the sweet spot now for yeah, people. F- fucking good one. But obviously, you know, waking up at seven a.m. for school or six a.m. for school doesn't really allow for that. But yeah, that's the thing, and like no kids going to bed later than like ten thirty or earlier, rather. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. I don't know. At least through at least through personal experience, but I don't know. <laughs> Young insomniac. Yeah. Oh, I had a bad in high school. Yeah. Big old couldn't sleep. It sucked, but we personally. What do you were. average in high school for, for sleep? Uh, max I get would be like four hours. Dude, I feel you. I'm not as I wasn't as bad, but mine was like five and a half hours to six, and I thought I was perfectly fine until I realized like. As soon as I actually slept more than six hours, I felt so much better in class. Yeah, I felt that. See, yeah, I didn't think it was a big deal either until my senior year, actually, when I had statistics block one and finished that class with like a 27. So, yikes. It was, li- <laughs> it was literally, I would not stay awake in that class or like I just physically couldn't or I would just skip it. So, sorry, mom. <laughs> I, I, I feel you there. I, would skip my first class the majority of the time. Granted, it was a study hall, so attendance being mandatory was kind of dumb in itself, but... Yeah, exactly. Hey. Yeah, I mean, I was like, I don't need the fourth year in math, so we're good. Oh, well. Did, oh, yeah, you didn't need four years of math to graduate, you lucky bastard. Yep. I got out just in time. <sighs> just in the nick of time. But that's in the past, and now we're in the future. Respectively. Well, the present, yeah. But, well, I said respectively. Yeah, sure, sure. Anyways, how was your day? Phenomenal. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, no, I had a good day. Um, days go by quick this past few weeks. And um, it was uh, my coworker's birthday today, so someone brought in cake. But it's crazy because the dude looks like he's no older than 30, but it was his 48th birthday today. Jeez. Yeah, like, he's he's looking real good for 48, so shout out to him. But, 
birthday, I had like a, a nice chocolate cake and I had to resist temptation. And then I looked like, cause like, I don't know, you know, you know me, I'm, I try to eat healthy and chocolate cake, um, isn't very healthy. Study show. <sighs> okay. I, I, I have a, uh, a quarrel with that way of thinking actually. Like also, I get if you're on a specific diet, right? That you like that you need to keep yourself to. But I feel like sometimes like foregoing sweets when it comes up in opportunities like a spontaneous birthday party kind of just makes people slowly unhappy when they make that choice because it's like it's one thing if you're having that cake at home and you're having a slice every day. But when's the next time you're gonna have chocolate cake? You know what I mean? Or at least that's how I would see it. I mean that's fair. I mean granted I could always just run out and get a chocolate cake if I really wanted to. But it's just the but fact then you're that having I'm... a whole cake in the house, not just a piece. Yeah, I know. I'm saying that. Personally, it makes me feel, oh, what's the word? It makes me feel proud of myself that I have the willpower to turn down cake more than anything. Uh, okay, that's that's honestly fair. Because like, I was looking at it and I was like, damn, that looks good. But then I'm like, hey, man, that's not you right now. And you're like, but it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. So you know, I, I, I probably would have turned it down myself. As you know, I'm not really a sweets person. Yeah, exactly. But, I say that, but I could definitely mess up the right kind of cake. You know, I feel the same way. But, like, with cheese. If that... <laughs> like, um... Uh, Dan's the cheese goblin that grabs the bag of shredded cheese and just shoves handfuls in his face no, over the okay. sink. I'm not, like, fucking, um, get me string cheese and I'll fucking eat it through my ass. I'm not that kind of person. Um, but, like... Is there that kind of people? <laughs> Dude, somewhere in the fucking world, there's definitely someone that, like... <laughs> no, there's... There is. How would you... Okay, hold the phone. You didn't realize for it to digest, it has to go in the other way first. It's not like a up system where if you put it in one way, it'll come out the other. It, does, it only works one way. It's a one-way street. I'm sure if I train my body enough and I mentally just, like, rearrange my organs... Everything would be okay. It would work out. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, I, for, I forgot we unlocked that tech as humanity. If, well, I have. Just now trying to brag, humble brag, but, um, anyways. Natural selection? Yes. Like, when it comes to cheese, um, I fucking, I love cheese so much, like, when it comes to, like, pizza mm -hmm. or, like, quesadilla grilled cheese, like, all that jazz. Oh, But I it love absolutely murders my stomach the next day. So I Are have- Are you lactose intolerant? I'm not, though. That's the thing. Like, I'm totally fine with, like, all types of dairy and all that jazz. Like I eat yogurt like once a day, but um, hmm. maybe it's the preservatives and cheese. It yeah, it definitely is. But it's, it's also the way it's um cooked because it's normally like in a very unhealthy way. Not that cheese is ever really healthy, but you. I was gonna say like, how do you cook cheese that really t changes if it's unhealthy or not? No, nah, I mean exactly, but it's mostly like melted cheese on something. That's that's fair, yeah. dude. Honestly, I've been craving like loaded nachos for no apparent reason i always have those random cravings um my one lately has been eggplant fries interesting yeah where i feel like we've had those i don't want to say recently but in recent memory when, at some place when you me and alex went to maggie mcfly's maggie mcfly we, i want to go back there actually hey let's go friday uh, do I work for... I'll let you know when I work, because I definitely do, mostly because I love their quesadillas. Hmm. And I know they have good eggplant fries, so it's... It's it's a win-win. It's a twofer. Um, alright, anywho, I think we should jump into some topics. Would you like to start? Yes, I would, actually. Just, I want to start ourselves off with some pretty good news. Like, this, this made me pretty happy to hear. So, there is a wildlife... Uh, reservation wild park thing in Africa and there has been zero elephants poached in a year in this wildlife park now why this is so amazing is that this wildlife park is the size of Switzerland oh Jesus Christ that's actually nuts I love that yes like it's it's actually so good to hear and I just thought that was our, like, kind of dose of, like, uplifting news. I like that. Yeah. People who poach elephants and um, take their husks um, should die. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They should die. Mm. Or some other severe punishment. Also, um, this is kind of sidetracked, but whenever I think of, like, elephant hunters, I think of people that have, like, um, 
they have the beard, but it doesn't go to the chin. They have it like hook into the mustache. You know what I'm talking about? Oh yes, yes, yeah. I do. I picture I picture that, and they're like really muscular, and they're missing teeth. But mm-hmm. anyways, I love this. Well, it's it's all like it's. Like the the great part that I found is the people from the Wildlife Conservation Society did not think that he was like they consider it remarkable that this happened, which is why it's so cool. Like it, it, like they were expecting to have them poached, but they weren't, which is phenomenal. Well, yeah, I definitely find it impressive that like a fat zero. Like normally you'd think like a miracle would be like only ten in the past year yeah, high. Exactly. And I mean, it's sad. Their num the numbers of the elephants on this reservation was like at one point I think twelve thousand, but now the number dropped down to like thirty six hundred about. Ugh. Yeah. And then a year ago it was estimated to be fewer than two thousand in general. Oh god. Yeah, elephants are they are on the endangered list, right? Uh I believe it I uh, I'm not sure about the species as a whole, but I imagine certain types are. Yeah, I imagine it's treading water. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, speaking of elephants, I'm you know I'm not gonna talk about it much, but there was a video online about a uh, elephant that literally just wanders across uh, Laos China border, like literally it just waltzes through China, <laughs> just an elephant just chilling out. Yeah, fuck it, why not? Live your best life, elephant. Yeah, yeah it, it's it's funny because on the security cameras it's just strolling. Dude, I I live for like elephants when they're if like they're happy or like people are playing with them, like throwing like beach balls at them and stuff, and they like flick oh, it with their so trunks. Cute. I do you know it. elephants' brains react the same way that we do when we see dogs when they see us? Wait, really? Yeah, genuinely. They think we're cute. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cute. Yeah, they, they look at us the same way we look at puppies. And when I heard that, I just can't help but smiling. Yeah, that's adorable. <laughs> or be smiling. Well, as long yeah, as, it's, as long as we're not cute pulling up in Jeep with guns, they're probably like, cool. Otherwise, they're probably like, mm, mm. I don't like this one. Oh, elephants are just the bomb, man. And then there's, like, elephants, when they cross over people's property, they show them, like, gingerly crossing over fences as to not destroy them and yeah. stuff. They're super <laughs> cool creatures. They're wholesome. I love it. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. All right. But that's our little daily deuce of upliving, uplifting environmental news, at least from me, as mm-hmm. of right now. More to come. Stay tuned. Yeah, but actually, hand in hand with that, so... Much like the Bella Thorne thing on Twitter recently where she was uh, basically blackmailed by a hacker and um, the hacker was like, give me money or I will leak your nudes. And she said, fuck you, guy. I'm just going to leak my nudes anyways. And similarly to that, Radiohead did something similar. They leaked their nudes? Uh, not exactly. (laughs) So... This unnamed hacker basically found a cache with their unreleased recordings from, I think, like, 1977. And these recordings are, I think, uh, it had 18 mini-disc recordings, and I think that, like, comes out to about an hour long each. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's a decent bit of content. Yeah. But they didn't really intend to have these released, so the hacker basically said... I'll release these unless you give me $150,000. And instead of paying that ransom, Radiohead just put the music online themselves. They uh, put it on Bandcamp for, I think, like 18 euros, which works itself out to like $23, I think. Yeah. According to this article, at least. And that's on Bandcamp, like I said. And all their proceeds for that go to... um, Gosh, I don't remember what the charity is called. It's uh, Extinction Rebellion. Yes, Extinction Rebellion, which is a mass extinction of our own mankind prevention thing where it tries to fight man-made climate change and biodiversity loss and stuff like that. So all the proceeds go to that, which is fantastic. But I just found it so interesting that just with the Bella Thorne thing, this thing comes to light. Also a radio head of hackers basically just having their plans foiled because the person's like, fuck it, I'm doing it myself. Yeah, that's such a that's such like a an alpha move to just like, especially in Bella Thorne's case, like, um, give me money, Aaron, I'll leak your nudes, and it's like, all right, bet, oh, there they are. Yeah, for real. Honestly, it's uh, it's definitely a ballsy approach. It definitely takes the courage. 
Yeah. It's also like, imagine being a hacker and like you're trying to fuck with like famous people on this level and you think like, oh, I got them around my finger and then they just shit on everything you tried to work for. <laughs> well, I mean, the hacker in Radiohead's case, I mean, realistically, like the only thing that they could have lost out on is just like judgment, and maybe money, right? Well, that, yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying is like, in terms of this, like, um, no, like, you're not getting, uh, I'll release your unreleased music from 1970, 1997, like, oh, fucking yeah. day, like, I mean, I Bella care. Thorne had a lot on the line, kind of. I mean, I guess it depends on where she stands with her body, because I'm sure most people don't want their, uh, their nudes out there. Their nudes out there, thank you. I didn't know how to properly put that, but she she was just fucking yeah. let's well, go for I it. I know Bella Thorne is like a very open person with like her body, sexuality, and like her past. Like I know she just released a book on her struggles as like being a child actor, and I guess there was a mm -hmm. lot of personal shit in there. So mm -hmm. this coming from her isn't that surprising, but it's still like damn, good shit. Yeah, I was what I was most surprised is that she kind of just posted them on Twitter though with uh like this like so I obviously went and searched for this because I didn't know if it was real and you know pertinent to the Bella Thorne thing. Well, you have and to when do I found research. them. I was more or less kind of like, oh shit, she really freaking did it. She, <laughs> like the the madman, <laughs> <laughs> that absolute madman. Like well, it was insane to me, but good on her, good on Radiohead. Don't give people what they want when they're just trying to be destructive. Oh well, yeah, uh, I could. I also respect you as um as someone who's very into their work that you went on your way to research her nudes i'm i'm thankful for it okay <laughs> don't give me too much credit i simply went over to her twitter and saw the post well the, let's be honest and that's you you gotta you gotta type it in you gotta click you gotta scroll a little bit it's a lot of work and for our viewers out there just so you know i didn't stay for long leave it at that <laughs> <laughs> but i might come back late no 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 <laughs> no thank you i'm just kidding i I don't, uh, okay, I'm not gonna go too much into it, but I don't really think people, like, many people can find much arousal from something like that, just in terms of the situation, so I hope not, in general. Well, no. I mean, it was like, um, what was it, like, two, three years ago, when all the celebrities got their nudes leaked? Yeah, dude, that was crazy. I, you know, I wish we were kind of doing the podcast about then, around then, because I had such a hot take on that. What was the hot take? Oh, I I don't remember I don't remember my exact words, but it was essentially just like a pubescent boy just rambling about how there's no point in trying to uh, <laughs> do anything with those photos just because it's essentially just being a creeper. Well, yeah, but, that's like yeah, that's the whole thing. Is like if you really wanted those photos for that thing, like just go watch porn. Yeah, but I guess people are attracted to the whole it's a celebrity thing. Well, that's true. But, or just use your imagination. Don't be creative. Yeah, um, don't, don't I, support people's privacy being exposed just for your own uh, nut. nut <laughs> yes, exactly. I also like how you initially uh, introduced this topic to me by basically like, I don't know, you kind of like insinuated that Radiohead's nudes also got leaked and then I was really confused. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're uh they're unreleased band covers with them just in full glory. <laughs> Fuck it. Honestly, 2019. 2019. What how does Radiohead look nowadays, do you? Um, do you know? They're a little old. Um I don't think I'd be too interested in their nudes to be fair. I'm sure somebody might be out there, but me personally not so much. Yeah, probably not. Could do all right. Um yeah, I had a <laughs> I had a quick topic, speaking of uh, famous people. Um, sure thing. This one isn't really that much, but um, O.J. Simpson and apparently Bill Cosby, uh, they joined Twitter. Um, How's Cosby on Twitter, behind bars? What? Dude, Wait, is he behind bars? I don't know what yeah, the hell he, he's, he's doing He's in right like now. a... He, I don't know. He's definitely locked away, but I'm pretty sure prison is just such a corrupt place that you can basically do anything. Well, I know, like, you can get certain things depending on what type of facility and you're in. So, and prisons are obviously private, so that leads out to, oh, God, don't even get me started on private prisons. Yeah, we won't get into prison reform, maybe another episode. <laughs> but, um... Get rid of them. Honestly. But, um, uh, OJ posted a video. He... His Twitter video was kind of alarming at first, because he said that 
I think his like last lines in it was that he wanted to get his comeuppance, and I'm like, oh, yeah, but like, yeah, OG, you kind of killed your wife. I don't know if you didn't really get any comeuppance, but it was hilarious. Yeah, I don't- <laughs> it was hilarious because everything he tweeted out was all the response were just like, um, uh, like you killed your wife, or it was like a meme that revolved around him killing his wife. And I'm like, I don't think Twitter's the place you want to be if you're trying to, you know, get some acceptance or anything. That's definitely true. But I mean, at the same time, it's like he's got to have some plan involved for hopping on Twitter because I mean, why else? Like, what could he gain from that besides some form of publicity, right? Well, exactly. I mean, maybe... And then Bill Cosby is honestly probably just being a creep on Twitter. Yeah, Bill Cosby... I mean, fuck both of them. Not a fan of either. You, but I just thought it was funny that... Can you do a Bill uh, Cosby impression, Dan? Huh? Can you do a Bill Cosby impression? The zip zam and the boo wop and the, the don't check your drink and the... You know, it's like... That's actually pretty good, I'm not gonna lie to you. You like that? At least that's what he sounds like in my head, because granted, I have not heard Bill Cosby in probably, like, 12 years. Well, it was, it, well, it was like, um, eight years ago. Do you remember the, the Bill Cosby rap? No, I do not. All right. <laughs> I'll show, I'll show it to you after. If anyone's interested, look it up. It's, it's like an original meme, and it's, I don't think it holds up, but it was funny at the time. Mm. Actually, speaking of memes, so, there's that, yeah, you, you brought this up. I'm kind of stealing this and moving on from OJ, but... No, please That do. video of the robot gang beat up, it's scaring people. Yeah. But, uh, do you mind shedding some light on why it shouldn't scare people, Dan? Okay, um, first off, the... If you haven't seen this video, it's like... I don't know what the intention is. They're, like, just kind of, like, bullying a robot and, like, having it hold packages and stuff. And they're, mm-hmm. like, just beating the shit out of it. And people are getting scared because they think it's real. But it's actually, um... It's kind of impressive because the entire robot is a 3D animation that uh, yeah. people made. For, and I think the video is, like, two, three years old at this point. But it's one of those things where it's just resurfacing. And people are like, oh, this is why the robots are going to kill us in the future. Well, so I believe the original video come came from, like, a robotics company called Boston Dynamics, right? Yeah, and, and they do do research with a lot of robots, so that's why some people thought it was real because they did a lot of stuff with that. Do you remember that like robot dog thing? Yeah, that essentially runs like a gazelle now. It's actually insane how far that's come. Yeah, honestly. But uh, the robot, th- it. What I find so interesting about people being scared about it is that they kind of forget that. Robotics isn't actually that far along. Like this, like this robot's doing such complex movements. It's actually crazy. I mean, I might have to disagree with you there because there was that whole thing in Japan where, um, mm. you know, mm-hmm. but uh, for a case listeners don't know, there was a whole thing in Japan like a year ago where like robots killed scientists. Um, but it's okay. That's overseas. Well, we don't got to deal with it for a little while. Yeah, it, okay, more or less, it's like, if this video actually was true, I'm sure a lot of people, or at least the company itself, would keep it under wraps. Yeah, yeah, but, uh... But, uh it, can you describe the video a little bit more? Um, alright, so the robot, it's like a basic robot. It looks kind of just, like, generic, and it's, um, like, people are throwing boxes at it. I don't know if it's they're trying to make it, like, if the intent was to make it look like it was, like, a mail delivery robot... Because they would give it packages and, like, obstacles for it to run around so we could deliver the package. Oh, I actually kind of know about that. Yeah. So, similar tests actually are run on real robots where it's a combination of... It's essentially a stability test. Okay, that makes sense. It's, like, it's to prove that... It's supposed to prove that the robot can make complex movements with its leg appendages as well as maintaining a stable hold on what it's in its hands that's important for things like uh like i I know a huge goal of these robots that are like highly mobile is supposed to be for like helping uh like disaster victims and like first responding like that's essentially the goal okay yeah i mean so it's to show that they can cross terrain and shit like that Yeah, yeah but um as the video goes on the robot starts like fighting back like a my favorite scene is at one point they're like hitting it with a hockey stick and the robot like deflects it and like t- catches the stick and then T poses. <laughs> Honestly, 
go look up the video and watch every accompanying meme you can find because oh it's worth it. The absolute best one was there was um he he blocks the stick and then the Dragon Ball Z Ultra Instinct music starts playing. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then like the energy beams start coming off yeah. of it as it's T-posing. Oh my it's God. fantastic. So funny. I'll, it's probably one of the best things I've seen in recent memory. If I find it, I'll throw it in the description. But um, Most definitely. Most definitely. And if not, uh, honestly, Dan or I will probably find it and tweet it out. So, humble uh, humble plug. Uh, go follow us on Twitter. Yep. But um, anyways, and then it, the video transpires where they're like shooting it with a gun. And then the robot gets the gun. And then doesn't shoot them, <laughs> but like walks them outside holding boxes as if like shoes on the other foot. And yeah, <laughs> like I, I, I imagine like people were forming their opinions before they actually finished the video because you get to that point, you're kind of like, okay, yeah, this isn't real anymore. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like at that point, the cameraman is either a robot or desensitized. So yeah. Oh, but what if it was? Yeah. What if the cameraman was a robot? Well, the funny thing about it is, is, you know, there was articles that came out with this video accompanying it saying, how far has the future gone? Robots start fighting back. <laughs> the robots and, are taking over the Navy! They're not like Onion articles. And they've almost since been taken down since the realization that just the 3D animation came to light. But people genuinely were like, this is crazy stuff, man. We gotta be on the lookout for robots, man. And like, news sites were genuinely trying to sell that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean it makes a great story, so... If it's real, it definitely does. I'm not denying that. Yeah. That's, that's definitely true. That's uh, definitely true. How do you feel? This is like on topic, but um, a little branching off. But how do you feel about robots towards the future? Do you think we should, you know, get jiggy with them? Or you think it's like, that's kind of scary. I don't want to go into that territory. Well, because that also crosses into a philosophical topic, you know, like AI, you know, yeah. artificial intelligence. So do you just mean robots to fulfill a task or robots with accompanying AI? Well, that's the thing is I feel um, it all stems from robots that are designed for a particular task where it's just mm, going to be okay. like a, your Roomba. We're going to give your Roomba a brain. And then when your Roomba is sick of sucking shit out of the carpet, it'll eat your dog or something. Well, on the subject of AI, the thing is like, it can, in my opinion, it can never actually be the same as a human brain, just because it goes back to that, uh, have you ever heard of the, uh, the Chinese translation room theory? No, I haven't, actually. Okay, so, what it is, is a man is locked in a room with nothing but a very large book with symbols on it, and... It's a code book, and when you, basically his task is when he, he gets a symbol in the inbox, th slid under the door, he takes that symbol, goes to the book, and then he finds what that symbol is in the code book, and then writes on the piece of paper the accompanying symbol it's supposed to get slid out from that piece of paper. What it is, essentially, is Chinese writing, and he is then basically translating Chinese. Now... The main question is, is he actually learning Chinese at that point? Oh, okay. I guess that makes sense. And I get it. When you apply that to artificial intelligence, it's basically saying you may be able to put all the processes in on how to figure out stuff, but you actually need the fundamental ability to learn on a human level for it to actually be our type of intelligence. Now, that's not to say that AI can't transcend our intelligence but it can't be on the same level as ours. At least how that theory puts it. Yeah. I mean, I think if you... Through that theory, yes, I agree with you. But I think if you look at it through, like, any perspective, like, any outlook you can have, it's definitely possible that, like, in a good amount of time, we will create something that is better than our... that that is better than us. You know what I mean? Well, that is true. But the thing is, like... Another important factor is, like, people assume that if AI becomes super intelligent, like, there's something called soft AI and, like, hard AI, and, like, there's soft AI, which is, like, what our phones do, like, when they, like, they know we called this person around this time, so it's, like, when you first open your phone, it'll prompt you to call that person. That's soft AI, and then there's hard AI, which is essentially, like, Terminator stuff. Yeah. 
And people assume that with that super intelligence, for some reason, accompanies human emotion and or like human levels of like drive, like meaning like the robots that have the super intelligence will start thinking the way humans will and start having their own agenda. There's nothing that actually supports that that could actually happen, at least to my knowledge right now. I could be wrong, but last I checked, there's nothing that really states, like, just because something is super intelligent means it will adopt its own agenda to accompany it. Yeah. I mean, it's also, we'll never actually have, I, personally, I hope that we'll never actually have, like, an answer to in our lifetime. Um, Well, there's many people that believe that just AI in general, like super intelligent, full-blown AI, like sci-fi movies, is just genuinely impossible to achieve anyways. Yeah, I mean, I feel like with time, we can. I feel like we're smart enough to do that. I just don't think it's the best thing to do. One thing that I am all for is, like, technological upgrades. Like, say I lost lost an arm in war, I can get, like, Mm -hmm. a a full metal arm. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, like... Like, basically, like, advanced yeah. prosthetics and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, like, insanely advanced prosthetics. Well, I oh, that'd be so cool if there was a way to connect neurons from your actual body to connect with the electrical components in, like, your arm or whatever, just so it actually, you know, functions like a complete normal arm. Yeah. Though, on that subject, I think we're not, like, that could be in an, in a in-our-lifetime thing. I definitely think it can be. I mean, I've seen, like, very rough... um I don't want to say mm. drafts, but like I've seen where that it is a possible thing, just obviously not up to where mm. it'd be a functional thing to have. Yeah, like I uh, have you ever watched the show Full Metal Alchemist? Yeah, like that kind of prosthetic. That's what we're talking about, right? Yeah, pretty much. Or um, oh, that'd be yeah, that'd be so cool. Have you ever seen? I wouldn't want this one, but have you ever seen the movie Upgrade? Uh, thankfully not, because I heard it was a trip. It's actually it's such a good movie. We should definitely watch it. Um, fine. I, I agree. I'll watch it with somebody. It's just the, from what I read, I thought I would just be so effed up from watching it by myself. Yeah. It's not like a horror movie. It's just like a, I don't know. How do you, it's, it's gory. It's like a, not a slasher, but like a, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's really fucking Like good. an intense drama thriller. <laughs> Something like that. But yeah, there, that thing is, um, it's the upgrade you get is like a chip in your head to where, um, mm-hmm. like an AI can control your body. And, um, what happens is, like, when he gets into bad situations, the thing will be like, do you allow me to have full control? And it'll be like, yeah. And then the AI will just, like, snap people's necks and just pop off. That's actually crazy. It's nuts. It's such a good movie. But, um, I don't know. AI is pretty cool. Maybe. Would you... Okay, so, on the subject of uh, AI, and, like, you kind of brought up Roombas. Mm-hmm. At what point do you think, like, like, do you think we'd ever make, get to a point with AI and advanced advancements on simple robotics like coffee makers and fridges and Roombas where, like, the advancements in reality will be almost pointless and negligible to the actual, like, point of the product, but still just be there for the sake of the advancement? Oh, yeah. 100%. I People love, like, limit testing with what they can do, and I would not mm. put it past a company to, like, Keurig to come out with Keurig that, um... It it makes your coffee, but it also tells you what the weather's like, tells you what this is, tells well, you the thing. what lottery numbers you should pick. Like, there's coffee makers and fridges that will essentially, like, add shit to your shopping list when they notice it's out. Like, I personally think that shit's pointless. As human beings, we should never be in a point where we're so disconnected from our lives where we have to rely on an algorithm to let us know when we need groceries. Oh, exactly. Like, it- I, I feel like that in itself is just pointless innovation granted it could lead to something greater i don't know where we're going as a society so it could help then but i feel right now that it's not needed it may be cool for like a month or so but like in reality you're just gonna get coffee when you need to get coffee you're not gonna check your virtual shopping yeah. list at least in my mind no, i feel that. i don't know what advanced people are doing and also um to my fridge just because i got the fried chicken from stop and shop the past three weeks because i've been having a tough three weeks doesn't mean i'm gonna want it for the fourth week in a row do you actually like the fried chicken from Stop and Shop? Um, if I'm like under the influence, yes, I love it. I I prefer Price Choppers, but that place. Oh, well, okay, Price Choppers fried chicken. Yes, I remember uh, when you worked at Price Chopper. I came in specifically for fried chicken at like seven at night. 
Yes, and we had a nice waltz around the store. It was glorious. Yeah, I think it took like an hour-long break. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> you know, I've always found myself in jobs that seem to really not give a shit what I do for some reason. <laughs> you know, I try to have jobs like that. Dude, my current job is, like, I have, I, I kind of have a joke with one of my coworkers that I, uh, they are actually not aware that I work there. <laughs> because I do stuff that apparently people get, like, reprimanded for, but I haven't heard anything about it. Well, hopefully your boss doesn't hear about it. Uh, I'm trying to think if my boss listens to our podcast. It's actually a possibility. Maybe. Hmm. Anyways, um... We, I should make a t-shirt for our podcast and advertise it at my job. That'd be nuts. Hey, um, I mean, I'm, I'm finally uh, proficient in screen printing, so I could uh, make some shirts someday. Hmm. If that's something people would be interested in. But um, I mean, I would be interested in it just because it's our group's logo anyways, or yeah. at least I would like it to be. Yeah, it'd be cool. Um, uh, we should do like a boy... Uh, this is a little side check. Oh, boy Next band? time we... Go- like, well, I was going to say, like, if we go on, like, a boys' vacation, we should all get frying pan shirts. Oh, that'd be so cute. Actually, people would probably make fun of us, but, like, I don't know. I'd feel good about it. I, it's the boys, exactly. I'd be like, that's my boy. I could tell for the t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> like, a, hey, Tyler, where'd you go? And, like, he just, like, stands up and, like, flexes the shirt. And I'm like, ah, there he is. Yeah, that's the boy. Oh, shit. All right, we should probably Jesus. move on from robots, right? It's a cool topic, definitely. We can probably touch more on it in the future as more stuff comes out, but I agree. But speaking of innovation, actually, moving on from that, Disneyland is making a $14 million Marvel expansion to open in 2020. Oh, baby. And now, I've never been to Disneyland, but this might actually be a reason for me to go besides the Harry Potter world. You know, I only went one time, and I think I was, like, nine, so I didn't really get to appreciate it. Also, I'm terrified of roller coasters. See, that's the thing. That's why I've never, like, like my like my family, it's always been on the table, but I'm, like, so anti, like, ride stuff in general. Like, I was always just like, nah, I'm good. Nah, we're good. Yeah. I was just never, like, I don't know, people are like, oh, the adrenaline rush, but I'm like, I don't like how my tummy feels when I go for the big drop. And also... When people go, like, upside down, I don't understand how that's enjoyable in any way. I always feel like my head's about to pop off any time I went upside down. That's what I'm saying. I just don't get it. But, um... Gosh. Right. Anyways. How old were you, like, when you knew for certain that just amusement parks weren't for you? If if you agree with that. Oh, I... Okay. First off, I don't like amusement parks because I don't like just walking around aimlessly um, with no, like, set goal. And because, like, I'm not going to, I don't really want to go on any rides because, I don't know, I don't enjoy it. And also, going to water parks is, like, a bacteria cesspool. Like, I'm not, like, a germaphobe or anything, but I don't do, or, like, water parks either. I don't know. Maybe I'm just boring. I kind of agree with that. Like, I liked water parks a lot when I was a kid. But then when I actually kind of became smart enough to realize that everyone's peeing in it, I... (laughs) Became so unhappy. Yeah, once I figured out that other people can pee in body of waters, I was like, oh, it's not going to work. For real. The last time I think I was at, like, a genuine water park where I was, like, full in it, not just like, oh, I'll go down a slide, was probably back in middle school when I was at Niagara Falls, and there was, like, this big indoor water park, Mm -hmm. and that was lit. But my eyes actually got so singed so bad because the chlorine content was so high because obviously people are peeing in the pool, so they have to have you know that intense chlorine. I actually couldn't open my eyes for like eight hours, genuinely. Jesus, that's actually terrifying. Like, it was like my my mother was ready to take me to a Canadian hospital, and <laughs> my grandmother was just like, "He'll be fine, relax." And I'm over here like, "Grandma, I can't open my eyes." Oh, your little Robert's not looking too good, eh? <laughs> it's okay, champ. We'll fix you right up. Oh, it's okay. Hey, Donna, can you get the syrup? <laughs> the syrup? Hey, kid, we're going to put this needle in your eye, but don't worry. You can't see it anyways. Oh, don't worry about it. Just think about just think about the St. Louis Blues winning the Stanley Cup. You'll, you'll never even think about it. Just think about the parade. Jeez, oh. I can hear my blood turning to maple syrup as we speak. <laughs> Mine already is. <laughs> um, Gosh. Anyways, we should probably talk about um, a little more Disneyland. about the amusement park. Yeah. Yeah. So, honestly, they haven't really actually said much about what it entails, at least from my knowledge. 
I know that if if people are saying that if it's on par with like their other lands, I don't know how they really like their other parks. I don't know. Mm-hmm. That could probably be like one of the biggest tourist attractions that it's ever going to have. Well, apparently they're doing it in three parks. Uh, they're doing it in Hong Kong. They're doing Walt Disney Studios in Paris, and they're doing Epcot. Hmm. I think the one in Paris is the one that's coming in 2020. That's what the article says, at least. I believe so, because I know Hong Kong was 2023, and I think the one in Florida was... Uh... 21, I think. Yeah. Um, and what's cool about it, though, is, like, Marvel Land. I don't know what they're actually going to call it. Probably their Marvel-themed expansion, as the article puts it. Well, yeah. Like, that's almost like a well of, like, kind of never-ending additions. You know what I mean? Like, they can change that up to match current films all the time. Oh, yeah. You could endlessly keep building on this. That's why it's such a smart move. And Very smart that's move. That's why I personally think Disney should be under investigation for owning a monopoly but apparently it's not a big deal to own the right to every popular um form of mm. entertainment well i mean like universal i mean like okay so like obviously like what was was harry potter world like the first one that was like a themed world based off of a like a fandom if was not it? i think it was right? if not the first it was definitely the biggest okay so like it's definitely taking a page out of their book but it's the smart way to do it you know because that's like when you can grab such a big population based off of something that, like, I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone that hasn't watched a single Marvel movie. Yeah. In this day and age. So it's definitely, there's got to be at least something in it for everybody. And oh. I mean, if they, because they own the rights to Marvel, they can add so much more stuff to it, like from comics and stuff like that. So, like, fans that have only seen the movies can go experience a different part of Marvel that they haven't seen. So they had the incentive to go, and then already Marvel fans can go because obviously they love Marvel. Like, it's such a smart business move, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, it's a win-win. Um, I think the only downfall would be is if they focus too much on the current cast. Um, Do you mean, like, like Endgame cast or, like, stuff that's going to I mean, like, out? if half the park's just, like, a... If half the park is just, like, a Spider-Man theme because Spider-Man's the most popular one. Yeah, I mean... You know I- what I mean? Um, I imagine it'd be something like that. What do you think some themed rides are going to be? Because I got some ideas. I imagine there probably could be a Spider-Man one that's just mostly upside down. Oh, you know what would be sick? If they did, um, like a Spider-Man one where it was kind of, kind of like a simulation, but it was an actual ride where you, it was like you were swinging from a web. Oh, I've been on one of those. They're fantastic. Yeah, but I'm saying like, it's uh, like, say the ride is like, um, it's just a straight or like you're going through the streets of New York and you're like swinging from building to building. Mm. That'd be nuts. It's like one of those like, it's like one of those like 4D rides. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Like where they like spray you with water and wind and shit to make it seem realistic and stuff like that. Yeah. And I wonder if they'll have like, um, they had these at Epcot a lot where it's like, do you remember back? Oh, you didn't go to stuff like this, right? No, but I definitely did go to, like, a lot of other amusement yeah. parks. So do you remember those rides that, they weren't actually rides, they were just kind of like, um, say it was like you were in a ship going through space, and it was just like... Yeah, it's like a it's like a movie type of deal. Yeah, like a movie like, ride. Like I an interactive like, show type yeah, of deal. Yeah, I think they would do something like that for Wakanda. That'd be pretty cool. Be cool. Um, I don't, honestly, I can't see them doing much with, like, Captain America. No, they he'd, could, he'd just be there. They could do some pretty cool stuff with, like, Iron Man, have a bunch of, like, hologram stuff and stuff like that, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, funeral. That'd be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Is that too early? <laughs> 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 oh, my God. But, uh, I hope there's a tombstone at least somewhere <laughs> in the park. <laughs> uh, I hope everyone's watched Endgame or at this point doesn't care. Uh, it's We're two months past, you're fine. Um, Jeez. I imagine they'll have like a Thor ride where it's like fucking bizarro where you're spinning in circles, but I hope for this ride, um, like Thor slams his hammer and then you just get like very hard dubstep. <laughs> Jeez. Actually on that subject, technically Guardians of the Galaxy's in there and didn't you say like a space age type of thing? Oh, you, oh yeah, you're right. Instead of Wakanda, you could definitely do Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, that's, that's actually... Pretty interesting. Inter- pretty interchangeable. You could do both. Um, mm. I know uh, Black Panther is was in like their little like teaser thing for it. Yeah, I'm seeing him in the bottom right. Um, yeah, probably something like 
Captain America's food court. Uh, gee, I don't know. I like. Honestly, I don't. I'm I don't know what else you could get with them. you there. Yeah. Uh, um, that's that's true. I know they could. Okay, so I feel like primarily it'll probably be a lot of Spider Man and like Iron Man stuff. At least most likely. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why you gotta stick with the popular uh, characters while they're popular. I agree with that, but at the same time, like, I feel like that could also be kind of redundant after a while. Yeah. Um. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe you get like a. Oh, maybe you get like a Captain Marvel women's right uh, section. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. But I, I hope they do like. See, we said, like, what kind of rides would they be? I hope they're more or less, I don't want to say games, because I hate, like, amusement park games, but kind of, like, interactive showings and stuff. Like, I hope it's more than just rides. Obviously, it's going to be more than just rides, but... Yeah. I'm wondering what could be that more. Well, see, all right. Here's what I'm trying to think. Because you know how Harry Potter was like, oh, you can get your own wand, or, or you can have the butterbeer. What would Marvel's thing be? Like, what would be... Uh... Like, um... <laughs> You can you get your... go into the Avengers headquarters. That's yeah, that could definitely work. Um, I maybe instead of like a wand, you get to make your own Thor's hammer. Ooh, okay, or like uh, I don't know. I imagine they probably would just have at least one thing from each popular Avenger, right? Like you get Thor's hammer or uh, Captain America shield, maybe or Spider Man mask. I don't know. Or um, uh, that one dude with the bow and arrow. You get his bow and arrow. <laughs> Honestly, if they just had a building, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> that just made me lose my train of thought. <laughs> the was... arrow guy is Arrow. Is his uh, name Arrow? Fuck. What's his name? Hawkeye. Hawkeye. You, ha- yeah. Hawkeye's bathrooms. That would be his yeah. section. Uh, honestly, if they just had a room that just showed uh, into the Spidey verse constantly, I'd go there just for that. Oh, on- yeah, dude. Oh, that could be another interactive one. That's true. It could be like a whole comic booky like art style thing. Yeah, they got a uh, like sunflower just constantly playing in the background. Cool. I get mm. down with that. I actually, though, that's a good point. Like, what would they have like as like the whole souvenir grabber type of thing? Yeah, um, I mean, I imagine they just kind of have like every character signature thing. Like, you can get a cap shield, you can get a Thor hammer, you can get a a Spidey mask, something like that, right? Mm. That's true. Oh, dude, what would also be pretty cool is if they, like, because you know how Disney, obviously, would probably be able to do some pretty kick-ass cosplays. I hope they have people walking around like they do at Disney World in, like, Mickey Mouse shit, Mm. but in, like, Avengers stuff. Because they could do such good quality costumes if they actually put the effort into it. Yeah, I imagine, like, the first day they're going to have Tom Holland in a Spider-Man costume. He's going to take off his mask for some kid. They did that with, like, Andrew Garfield that one. Point, I think. Yeah, I think they did it with uh, Tom Holland, but I think it was for something like he was. They, I think they were like film. I don't remember what it was, but he was wearing a Spider-Man costume. He took his mask off against. There was like kids having mm. field trip. Yada yada. It was cool. You know, actually speaking of Iron Man, it's not one of our topics, but Adam Savage purchased a uh, Iron Man suit, like a full blown flying suit, and basically put an Iron Man skin on it. Wait, like Myth Mythbusters, Adam Savage. Yeah. Oh, God bless like, that, man. It's like actually like a flying, hovering suit and stuff that works to a certain degree. You should go look up the video online. It's pretty damn interesting. That is kind of nuts, and i he's probably the best person for that purchase, I'd say. Honestly. Like, people were sad at first when they thought, like, initially people thought he invented it, but he didn't. He just purchased it, but it's still a pretty cool thing for him to have just in general, because he's such a chill dude. Yeah. Very cool guy. Very huh. cool guy. Um... All right. Uh, I'm going to yoink one of your topics, actually, since you took my robot one. Go for it. Um, Nintendo, I liked this a lot, that Nintendo delayed Animal Crossing a whole year because they didn't want to put the employees through an excessive crunch. Oh, dude, that made me so happy to hear about. Like, if you read their quote... uh... Okay, can I... Do you mind if I read the quote just to start us off? Go for it, go for it. So, it goes, the crunch point is an interesting one. Nintendo America's president, Doug Bowser, told uh, IGN at E3, For us, one of our key tenets is that we bring smiles to people's faces. And we talk about that all the time. It's our vision. Or our mission, I should say. For us, 
that applies to our employee own employees. We need to make sure that our employees have a good work-life balance. And one of those examples is is we will not bring to market before we will not bring the game to market before it's ready. We just talked about one example in Animal Crossing is delay referring to. It's really important that we have that balance in our world. It's actually something we're proud of. And where this kind of stems from and why I think it's so absolutely amazing is people are trying to shortchange Nintendo and be like, oh, that's not a big deal. That's literally just a quality of life thing that shouldn't be worried about. But the actual reality of the situation is, is game companies will put their workers in four month long crunches where they're doing 80 hour weeks mandatory. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was like, gonna say. It's not. It's not something that should be taken for granted because it's not a normal thing in the game industry. Crunch time is murder for a lot of employees, and it just shows that Nintendo is such a great company that they'll do that for their employees. Well, that, yeah, that's the thing is like, um, I a lot of companies probably go through this, but a lot of game companies where it's you as a company, you set a deadline, and when you get to crunch time, you have to fucking put in the hours or else you're not going to meet it and then people are going to be upset and that was the thing Mm. with the animal crossing was this i think they initially said that they wanted to release this sometime this year but um obviously Mm -hmm. they didn't want to kill their employees so they were like all right one more year and to my knowledge a lot of people are understanding about this though or so yeah most people are perfectly okay with it yeah like the people that have been waiting for this game are like that sucks, but I entirely get it, so it's not a big deal. Well, they're happy because it almost... Okay, theoretically, obviously, this would be in a perfect world. I'm standing up, sorry. Um, <laughs> in a perfect world, this should mean that there should be no problems with the game. Is If they do as they claim. Yeah. This should mean that the game should be better than it would be if it came out this year. And that's why I know a lot of people are happy about it. Mm-hmm. Um, Though, it's like... Like, it's really, I feel like it should be highlighted how good it is on Nintendo because a lot of problems with deadlines isn't just with the development team, it's the publishers, it's the the sponsors and people that put money into the project that push the development team. Yeah, exactly. So the fact that they're willing to almost, I don't want to say handicap themselves, but they are realistically losing out on profits by pushing it back. Yeah, uh, it's... Basically, I don't know. It's a, I don't think it's a fix because I feel like it's something that probably will never be fixed unless. Well, it... deadlines are deadlines. That's how the creative industry is. Well, exactly, and like that's fine. I get that entirely, but it just it became too normal to push your employees to the brink. Yeah, essentially, like it's one thing if you got a crunch for a week, but companies have been cited to like do like four month crunch times. Man, like that's crazy. Yeah, like, 80 hours a week is not healthy by any means. Exactly, and I'm glad Nintendo, like, at least went on record saying that they care. So at least if it comes out that they don't care, they have something to look back on and be like, well, what the hell, Nintendo? Mm. Um, Yeah, I mean, Nintendo as a company has gotten a lot of shit for how they... uh, For a lot of things, actually, but I remember the main thing was that they got a lot of shit for... um, You couldn't upload any content that involved Nintendo games, because if you were making money off it, they got... they were not having it. Mm-hmm. And I think they finally like did away with that where they're like, all right, it's fine. We get it. Um, I think the only other gripe with Nintendo right now is how they're handling their new Pokemon game. Oh yeah. What's going on with their Pokemon game? Um, so apparently they're not including all like 800 or 900 Pokemon in the game. They're mm-hmm. just doing like select few. So like if your favorite Pokemon's not in it, tough shit. But I, there's okay. been so much backlash for this that I'm hoping they kind of understand and they're like, all right, this is the wrong choice. We'll take some time again to, uh, you know, not. Because the, like their their argument with it is that they didn't, because it's going to be on the Switch and they're like, the hardware can't support it. And it's like, no, that's, that is kind of bullshit. It definitely will be mm-hmm. able to. But that makes, that makes sense. Honestly, I just from seeing the images of, uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Yep. I have never played a Pokemon game before, you know that, or I have never got past the first town, couldn't care for it. Yeah. Just from what I've seen, I can actually see myself playing this game. 
just because I don't have to have that horrible top down view of going through grass. Yeah, you know, I've it's it's one of those things where like as you um when you're a kid and you're playing it and you like grow up with it, it's something that doesn't bother you, but I could definitely see it like when you see how the game is now to where it's more third person, you're kind of like more into the game. It's like, oh, this is yeah, see, a million times I like, better. Yeah, I like the whole you put it exactly how I felt. You feel more into it when it's like that. At least from what I've seen so far for me. But. Yeah. And it'd definitely be nice to just like take my Switch around, and just play Pokemon. Dude, I've been, as you know, I've been taking my Switch with me more often. It's actually a great console on the go. And I don't know why people are saying the battery life is crap on it. Might have lasted me a decent bit of active playing. I think it depends on what game. Because I've heard, That's like. That's true. Breath- I, I also don't play with sound on. Yeah, I've heard, like, Breath of the Wild doesn't last that long, but it's also a pretty intensive game. That's that's definitely true. But, um... Hmm. I'm with it. Good on Nintendo. Good on Nintendo. Yeah, I just really hope that they do the same with Sword and Shield, where they're like, all right, we'll delay it a bit. Or if they're just like, you guys are right, we can do it here. Hmm. Well, I, I kind of see where they're coming from, though, in a, in a sense of, like, I feel like 800 Pokemon is a lot. It It is, but it's also kind of lazy. I, I agree, but it could just be like a coding thing where they're having trouble just coding in all the interactions into their new 3D format, right? But it's also, like, a lot of these Pokemon were in... They were 3D sprites before. Oh, That's okay. why people well, are then... like, eh, I don't know, Brody. Hmm, interesting. Do you do we know when Sword and Shield is supposed to come out? Uh, November. There's actually so many games coming out in November. I can't wait. Hmm. I'm just excited for Monster Hunter, but that's a topic for a oh, different. Day. Actually, speaking of that, um, there's a open beta on PS4 at the end of June. For uh, Iceborne, Iceborne right? yeah. I saw that you could ride the Dragrasses now, and I'm very ha- hyped for that. Very happy. Yeah, that. Very happy. But that's <laughs> yeah, that's entirely different. Yeah, um, of course, of course, of course. Let's see. Do we have any more topics you want to talk about? Um, let me go back to the document real quick. The lottery thing. Oh, okay. So I got some interesting topics. So me and our friends Daniel include last night. We're talking about a uh, basically one of those scenarios of what if you won the lottery. We like to talk about those here. We like to talk about those in our group. And it prompted me to look into some statistics that I would like to talk about a little bit in terms of uh, winning the lottery. Would you do you mind if I ramble talk about it? ramble them off, baby? I'm happy to listen. So statistically, the odds of winning are about one and one hundred seventy five million. I'm not sure which games in specific that's limited to, but one in one hundred seventy five million. And according, you know, this is towards the genders of who plays the lottery the most. According to a study, men play the lottery every 18 days versus women playing it every 11. So apparently women are more likely to, or are frequent lottery purchases more than men. Now that doesn't take into account the actual volume of their purchases, of course, but women are more frequent lottery ticket buyers. Mm. And this is, uh, so when we were talking about winning the lottery, we were always saying, like, oh, we would give X amount of money to our friends and family, you know, like, everyone I, like, I, we got, like, ten friends in the group, I would give, say, if I won, like, a hundred million, I would just give a million to everybody, you know? Mm-hmm. And on that subject, a study shows that all 3,000 British winners who won one million dollars or more found that they gave to their friends and family... A to- totaling across all 3,000, $1.8 billion. Jeez. Like, that's actually staggering in terms of the actual number of uh, amount one to the uh, amount of people. Like, th- you would say, like, uh, 3,000 people, that doesn't seem like much considering they all won over a million. But that is a lot just because the way number creep works. So, exactly. I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, also, in one study in Florida winners, 70, 70% of them spent every last dime of their jackpot within five years of winning. All right. Um, this one, to be fair, it is in Florida. So. Okay. That's true. But we were talking last night about, you know, we would say, like, oh, we'd be smart with our money. Apparently, the trap of it is it's just that they don't manage the finances properly. Yeah. I mean, also. 
it's in Florida. You hear, I imagine they spend a lot of their money on like gator insurance and like, um, <laughs> man eating my face insurance and shit like that. I mean, you're you are correct. It's Florida, so honestly, they probably just like, I don't know, what would be something pointless to purchase in Florida? Um, bought a shark. Yeah, bought bought a shark. Um, I'm going to my house is really cold right now, so I'm going to burn all the money to keep my family warm. Honestly. Um, uh, moving on from that, seventy five percent of people that win the lottery report feeling happier about winning the lottery. And this goes back to that question that we had a while ago on the podcast, does money buy happiness? I now, can you obviously you could probably guess, but do you know why they reported that they were happier? Um, no financial struggles. Pu- that's purely the reason. It's just that they didn't have to worry about finances. Yeah. I mean, and that's like fair. that. That obviously in this day and age, it's uh, you know just not being having to worry about finances at all is just probably one of the greatest feelings you could have. Exactly. Um, and I, I have some more depressing statistics if you're ready for them. Yeah, I'm. I'm reading them. <laughs> Hit me. <laughs> so, uh, homicide of lottery winners, or once you've won the lottery, your risk of homicide becomes t- becomes twenty times more likely, and it becomes 120 times more likely to be a victim of homicide at the hands of a friend or family member. <laughs> Do you think uh, any of your friends or family would kill you? Yes. You want to name anyone specific? or? Uh, not really, but I just oh. know that can you narrow money it down? can change people. Can you narrow it down between a friend or a family member? <laughs> uh, uh, friend, I would say... We're probably not at an age where anyone's worrying that much about financial struggles where they would gap me for not sussing them a few grand. Yeah, true. But in terms of family, eh, I more or less just say that because you never know who will come out of the woodwork. Yeah, that's true. Because I always, I don't know, you ever find out randomly that you have just like a random uncle? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I'm referring to. Yeah, that's, nope, I'm with you. And then, uh... To continue the depressing statistics, so I'm going to give some specific cases where negative things have happened to people from winning the lottery. Just because people always imagine the positives. There's definitely negatives. <laughs> yeah. So, Billy Bob Harrell Jr. That's a, that's 30 a fu- fucking... I'm sorry. It is. It's it, a banger of a name, no, that, dude. It's a freaking NASCAR that, name if yeah, I've ever heard one. The best thing about it is that it's from Texas. It, it's the best. So, Billy Bob Harrell Jr., I love the Jr., it makes the name to me. <laughs> it's literally NASCAR. He won $31 million in the Texas Lottery in 1997, so with inflation, that's actually a lot of money. Yeah, it's a good amount. As of 1999, he committed suicide in the wake of an incessant request of money from friends and family, and he is quoted to say, winning the lottery is the worst thing that have ever happened to me. Ooh, money buys happiness, man. It's more or less his friends and family were pieces of shit. Yeah, money, money makes happiness. I'm so happy that I won the lottery. Just kidding. Just All kidding. I'm saying, if I won the lottery and anyone decided to pester me to give them money, I would just have someone break their legs. Yeah, you could, so definitely, hire, you could definitely get in with the mafia. And no, I would just hire another friend to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm around. Hey, uh, Jordan, do you mind uh, going to break Tyler's legs, please? He keeps asking me for money. Uh... Why? I'll give you money. Okay. <laughs> Dude, fuck it. Yeah, the responses he'd give. And I'm just going to butcher this name because I'm going to let you guys know this guy's last name actually has Abuda. two accent marks. And I have no clue how it's pronounced. William Abuda, most likely. Post. William Abuda Post won $16.2 million in Pennsylvania in 1988. In 1989, his brother hires a contract killer to murder him and his sixth wife. And his landlady also sued for a portion of the jackpot, and he was convicted of assault for firing a gun at a debt collector. And he declared bankruptcy, and then later died in 2006. Yeah, it's honestly so it's, it's crazy how much money changes people. Well, I mean, okay, the thing is, could you, if... Say one of our friends in our group genuinely won the lottery. We're talking big sum, upwards of ten million. Okay. Do you think you would still talk to them the same way? In all honesty, do you think that would not change a single bit of how you would talk to them? Um, it would. 
it would all stem from how they act. Because I, I don't think, like, them getting this large sum of money would change my perspective on them until they acted differently with that large sum of money. Now, that is a very careful and safe way to answer that question, because I 100% agree with that. Like, at first, I wouldn't have said that, but that made a lot of damn sense. I, I'm i actually stunted because that was, like, the perfect response to that question. Yeah, well, I mean, my thing is, like, it doesn't matter what happens to you. It matters how you, I guess, react with what happened to you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if that's That's fair. Yeah, like, if my friend was crippled from the waist down, it wouldn't change how I thought about them. But if they just, like, became, I mean, like, with <laughs> with good reason, just became, like, severely depressed and, like, didn't want to do anything, I'd just be like, damn, mm. unlucky. Well, okay, so don't, don't judge me on this because it is a more negative view. I would definitely look at that friend differently and talk to that friend differently because in my mind, if I was still in my current state when that happened... Financially, just, you know, I'm working a part-time job. Obviously, I'm not making bank. Mm -hmm. I would most definitely look at that person as more than just a friend. It would become almost an opportunity at that point. Now, I know that sounds horribly cynical and probably ruins your opinion of me a little bit, but I wouldn't be able to get past that because in my mind, that connection definitely does change. It becomes a new world to me. No, I feel like everyone feels that way. That's just kind of human nature. It just, Mm. like, it's, you'll feel that way until you catch yourself feeling that way, is the way I view it. I think that's fair. I mean, I definitely wouldn't murder someone over it, but I would definitely just, like, I would be nicer in hopes that something hopefully nice happened to me like that. You know what I mean? Like, I would be hard-pressed to not feel, at least in some points, a little cynical about it. Yeah, I mean, I I would definitely feel, like, jealous about it. I'd be, like, upset that... I don't know, say if I played the lottery at the same day that I didn't win, like, obviously I'd be like, well, fuck me, but I wouldn't, mm. I, it wouldn't make me think, like, I need to kill this man and steal all his money, obviously, or anything of, like, I view him differently. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's. I think it's just all about how you, how your perspective is as a person. Like, I definitely agree with what you said of, like, um, I could see it as an opportunity, but then like I'd catch myself thinking like that's not the right way to think about people. But it's also that's fair. if if I was in that situation like literally and physically, I would maybe have a different outlook. Mm, I would I would say that that's probably fair. It's just I feel like what I couldn't get over is like because winning the lottery is something that I'm sure we've all at least thought about once. I would almost be, I wouldn't say distraught, but I'd be, like, so confused that it actually happened to someone so close to me, more or less. So I feel like that would change me as a person. Yeah, I could see that. Because that fantasy wouldn't be, like, just a fantasy anymore. I would be fantasizing about living that friend's life instead. You You get what I mean? Like, I would almost, like, I would try and vicariously put myself in their shoes rather than just a random lottery winner, it'd be that person's shoes yeah. instead. And I feel like that's what anyone would do. I mean, mm. I know person like, I would be a little hurt if none of the wealth was shared with me, but I wouldn't lose sleep over it, because it's not like I earned it in any way. Well, granted, lottery isn't very much le- earning it, but still, yeah, I get what you're saying. God didn't want me to earn it, I guess. The big moon man in the sky said, no, no, Dan, the big not for moon you. Man. <laughs> Ra, the sun god, has not blessed me on this day. <laughs> Cthulhu, the elder beast, did not think it should come my way. King Ghidorah didn't bless me. <laughs> sky Lord Armathian <laughs> decreed that I did not earn the good green today. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, fuck. I think we need to end it. (laughs) I'm losing it. Yeah, that's gotta be it. Yeah, that's gotta be it. You know, now that I've said King Ghidorah, I'm probably gonna just try and tie everything back to that, so... You know. I I think there's no more up for this episode. I think we've plateaued at the highest peak possible. (laughs) Oh, yeah, we are on our Everest at the moment. (laughs) All right, take us home, buddy. (laughs) All right, everybody. As you know, this has been the Frying Pan Podcast, episode 33. We appreciate you tuning in. And we also appreciate you listening to us on any of these audio platforms, such as Spotify, Apple Music, Stitcher, uh, YouTube. Is that it? Uh, Podbean. 
Podbean. Podbean, don't forget Podbean. Um, so we appreciate that. Right. If you could leave a like or a comment, that'd also be fantastic. And if you could also follow us on our social medias, we have our Twitter and Instagram. The handle for those is the Frying Pan Pod. Sauce us over a follow. Dan's been kicking it on the Instagram. I'm fucking and doing it, baby. I've been learning how to use Twitter. So you could also follow me and Dan over on our personal Twitters, which I'm sure will sauce a link in the description because I can't remember my handle off the top of my head. Can you? I can't either. Okay, so in that case, look in the description. We'd appreciate I'm sorry, it. Sorry, I said I can't either. I don't know if you just didn't hear me. No, I. Yeah, you said can't. Maybe you blue screened again. Who knows? Hello? Can you not hear me? I'm going to guess yes. I, ke- I-, I heard you typing. Hello? Hi. All right, so I don't know where to pick up left. Should I just rerun the intro back? No. Or outro back? No, we'll have a little scuff. That's fine. All right, all right. So, picking up. Um, yes, we are on our social medias. Uh, I know my audio probably still picked up where I was talking just because it's Audacity, not Discord. But yep. good luck editing this, Dan. I'll do my best. So, yes, we are on social media. If you could give us a follow, that would be much appreciated. And we also have our email, which is in the pan podcast at gmail.com. You can send us over any criticisms, business inquiries, anything of the sort. That's where our friend Noah found us. Well, technically on Instagram, but send us the email. So we appreciate that. Well no, I think and, no, he found us through he found us through this because we don't have our email advertised on uh, Instagram. Well, I, I certainly got from one place to another. Regardless. Regardless. And you could also send us over any constructive criticism, because as I always say, we do this to get better, and one of the best ways to get better is receiving constructive criticism. Yeehaw. So thank you for that, folks. And a final thanks to Noah for our, our new intro, as Dan said earlier. Let us know what you think of that. And finally, as always, this has been the Frying Pan Podcast. I've been Robert Kingador D'Onofrio. Uh, it's been me, Daniel Mothro Seer. And this has been the Frying Pan Podcast, episode 33. Have a great day. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you for tuning in. And catch you in the next one. Arigato. Itadakimasu. Itadasai. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs>